My name is Anis Crefani and welcome to Auto Deploy the Main Controller on a QNAP Virtualization Station. I'm recording this video for personal training and it will take about 20 minutes. This video is the best view for level 1 of a mature engineer. So, let's start. For this video, I'm going to use the Turbonas TS453A, but you can also use the Turbonas TS. 253A. I'm going to use the administration web page that you can find on the CoFinder Pro. And as you can see, on the main menu, you have a virtualization guide in which QNAP provides numerous features dedicated to virtualization and performance enhancement. Here a brief overview for VMware vSphere. And here the same for Microsoft Hyper-V. And the first step for the virtualization station installation is to go on the main menu under App Center. Select QTS Essentials. and looking for Virtualization Station. And as you can see, we are going to download and install the application on this QNAP device. And I'm going to consider the virtualization station application like a Type 2 hypervisor running on a QTS host operating system. A Type 2 hypervisor make request to the host operating system, in this case QTS, for resources and to perform any kind of activity. When running the virtualization station for the first time, you will remember to you that it will use port 8088 by default. It will also provide a system minimum requirements check on the local device. And now we have to set up the virtual machine default folder and later configure the default network interface for this domain controller. And now we have to select the folder for the default path to store virtual machine and ISO images. And as you can see on this device, Three default folder are available called Homes, Public and Web. So under Homes, I'm going to create two new folders 
cold. Also and VM. And the second step is to confirm the default network interface in use. This connap device has four physical adapters, but for this video I've connected only one. And here you can have a basic idea of the different networking modes of virtualization station if you are new on this technology. And before to start with the virtual machine creation, Kunap is providing to you three possible virtual switch configuration based on bridge, external only, and isolated networking topologies. And before to proceed with the virtual machine creation, I'm going to use File Explorer in CoFinder Pro, looking for the ISO folder that I've previously created, and I'm going to copy and paste the Microsoft ISO image for Windows Server 2012 R2. And now it's time to create the virtual machine on this device. And as you can see, Kunap is providing four different default templates that you can use for your virtual machine called micro, mini, small, and medium. You can also create a custom VM or a new template. For this video, I'm going to use the small with 1GB of memory and 40 GB in size for the virtual disk. I'm not going to use the VNC password for this video. And after the virtual machine creation, Kunap suggests you to use Ultra VNC, Spice, or Real VNC to access to a virtual machine console.
And now I'm going to start the T-Spiriton machine and I'm going to connect to it through the local console. As you can see, here we are using port 8088 for the remote connection. And now I'm going to follow the default deployment for a Windows Server virtual machine. And what I found nice to see is the open source implementation of the C BIOS used on the virtualization station. And we are now remotely connected to TC01 for the domain mylab.educational in which I want to show you the processor in use for this QNAP device and also the default and basic driver configuration that you can find after a full initial installation. You can see that for a PCI device, the default driver is missing. To be able to shut down or restart the virtual machine and install the correct drivers provided by QNAP, we have to insert the VM driver called QNAP Guest Tool. And we are now to extract and install the para-virtualized VIRT-IO drivers for Windows Guest Virtual Machine. And also, we are going to install the Quick Emulator Guest Agent.
And now a quick overview of the Windows driver package installed by Red Hat. And as my personal opinion, for this device, I see the Virtualization Station an excellent tool to practice with a few virtual machines or for any kind of branch offices in which you have a small number of users to serve. So, it could be excellent for domain controller or a read-only domain controller. And uh, if you are interested to invest on your personal lab with more performance and more virtual machine, I still suggest to buy a real server. And we are now near the end of this video, so what I'm going to do is to shut down this virtual machine using the virtualization station console and then starting it again so you can see the full process And we are at the end of this video, so thank you very much for your time and if you want to be in touch with me, just subscribe on my channel. Bye!